Alright guys, welcome back to our Let's Dev, Let's Code, whatever you want to call it, series of our Mega Man X platformer. In the last episode, we did camera controller, so where we can like, now explore the room, and as you can see, we have a new stage here with some uh, new uh, walls and whatnot, like a tile set. Um, so I'll give you a quick little tour of the area here. I mean, we have our x-axis lock so we can keep looking there's also some platforms here that we could probably drop down into but we don't have that functionality to set and we also have a moving platform where we can move along because if, if you are if in the platformer episode if you put down hsp carry and hsp final you should be able to do this on any moving platform no problem and then of course now we have this little gap to do if we can't explore it standing up but maybe when we dash in the future we should be able to do it um, I'll give you a little, a little bit of a tour of what happened. So, off camera, what I did is I added in a OBJ tile wall, which is basically referring to the sprites of all these tiles here, as you can see in this animating image. Um, this is big credits to Sean Spalding's tutorial on doing uh, tile wall sets. I'm not going to do a, de a dev series on how this works, but it's just basically assigning the right, uh, this, a specific uh, sprite ind index depending on what the tile wall is connected to like how it's all how it all connects together and it just behaves similarly to our floor splite and because it's paired into the uh, master controller of the floor so and also what i added was a master controller for platformers which can help it which will help us later um, in today's episode um, it just parents all over platform our types of platforms and our moving platforms which also these platforms come from uh sean spalding's platform tutorial Again, I'm not really going to go over details, but I will make one note. I did change up some of the code here. Um, where here it said player .key down. Instead, we're going to use a new variable called player tab, which I will get to in, in the future here. Um, but other than that, that's just about it. Um, today, what I want to focus on is crouch or have the availability to crouch and also rapid fire. So instead of in game where you have to spastically hold down the shoot or press the shoot key you can just hold it down and it will add like as a machine gun um because rapid fire is i think it's in it starts in x4 but it, it it's it's in x5 it's probably in x6 and so on and so forth everybody probably wants to have it so let's go ahead and code start by coding that today uh, like the camera system, it's pretty simple. There's not much code to add, but all we're going to do is just go into our step event of our player, and then we're going to go into the Xbuster controller here. Um, actually, first of all, that we actually do need to define the uh, new variables. Uh, it's just two, and um, it's it's just these two variables here. So it this first one is a uh, bo a boolean or a true or false one so rapid fire is what we'll call it it's going to be set to false and then rapid timer which will be integer values is equal to zero and in our uh, timer diagram and controllers we don't need to do anything crazy we just need to do something similar like we do with our three timers up here uh, just make it say if rapid timer is greater than zero rapid timer minus minus otherwise uh, set it to zero that's simple so that's the time we're all good to go. Now back into our Xbuster controller. Um, so be below our defined inputs here, we we need to change up our shoot key here. So if we're rapid firing, we're going to say key shoot is equal to keyboard check, not press, because that will this value will be one if we're holding down the key, and that's what we want. So ord r else key shoot will instead uh, be checking to see if we pressed it so nothing special on that and then below this we're going to make something called rapid fire toggle uh, where we'll create, introduce a new input called uh, key toggle which will be equal to keyboard check pressed or it could be any key that you want but i'm going to choose m and this is basically what it says on the tin. It just toggles between if we want to rapid fire on or off. And of course, maybe we can maybe make a menu later where we had to select the option to turn on or off rapid fire. But this is just for convenience for now. So if we if we press the toggle key or just say if key toggle, what we want to do is we want to just toggle between enabling or disabling rapid fire. 
So if we're not rapid firing right now, we'll say rapid fire is equal to true, else rapid fire will be equal to false. Down here where it says you get the X buster, um, we need to add another condition saying that a rapid timer must be equal to zero. And then in here, we need to add a line of code under this here and just say if rapid fire will set our rapid timer to be six. And this will activate our rapid fires. So, because if this wasn't here, we would be shooting like an array of uh, our projectiles causing a maybe a, a high usage in our memory and also it's just not really efficient. So six is a good number. I mean, you can play with this value just, just depending on how slow or how fast you want to shoot the lemons. So one more thing we need to do really quick is just go add in our condition here under our charge just to make sure we are not rapid firing. So this statement needs to be false. And from there, that's, that's all we need to do. So now if I run the game, we start out with rapid fire being off. So no problem. So, we, of course, we can just press the key and then we can charge up and we can shoot our projectiles. Now, if I toggle by hitting M, if I hold down R, we are, I'm, I'm holding it down right now and this is like the machine gun and we can't charge it and we can just go around and just spam lemons everywhere. We can aim up and do it. Well, we can aim up, we can aim down and do it. It's just a big old, big old mess. Ooh. There seems to be an animation bug right there. Okay, let's look into that really quick here. All right, I got the fix for it, so if we slide down, it won't really lag there anymore. It, it does the right animations, and all I did here is go down to our uh, ground-based animations where we're meeting with the floor, and then down here I just added a, an op alternative uh, check index here. Or if we're either between, if we're checking the index of jumping or while jumping, we'll just still animate the player to land. And as you can see, when we do that, whoop, if I can, come on, if I can, yeah. So that's out of the way. Now let's get on to the fun part of crouching, shall we? So here's where we, here's where we need to jump all over the place. So the first, we'll start with our scripts, of course. Um, we're, it's it's just we're adding just bits and pieces. It's, it shouldn't be much, I hope. But um, we'll start by going into our player scripts and going into the check index, and we're going to find a new case here. So down here below land, I'm just going to say whoop, not in all capital letters. I'm just, just going to say case duck. You can maybe say crouch if you want, but I like duck. So if our sprite whoop. If our sprite index is equal to duck sprite, or sprite index is equal to duck shoot sprite, or sprite index is equal to duck flat, oh, duck shoot du sprite, uh, we're just going to return one and break and end the case there. Now you're want, you're probably wondering why I didn't say duck shoot and duck flash is because I have the sprite indexes combined. I have the sprite files combining both of those, as you will see here. So here is our, our duck sprite here. And then for our uh, duck shot, you can see that the flash happens, and then it just kind of goes like that. We need to make sh I need to make sure I define these sprite files already in our uh, individual player type. And I have done so already right here. So we don't need to worry about that. Cool. All right, so that that's that one done. We need to go to our animate player uh, script now, and again, we need to make a new case. So under the land case, we'll make a case of duck. Here we go. So if our shoot timer is greater than zero, or our aiming is not equal to zero, um, if vertical aim is equal to one, we'll have our sprite index be set to our duck shoot du sprite, else our sprite index will be set to our duck shoot sprite, call it good. If aim is not equal to zero and sh oh, image index is greater than six for animation purposes, and shoot timer is equal to zero, 
image index will be reset to 6 and it will stay there until we let go of the aiming key. Else, so otherwise there's just two more lines of code we need to add here. Um, we can just say sprite index is equal to duck sprite and then if we are ducking or just the duck variable and image index is greater than 5, we'll have image index set to 5. Now the the variable duck we were we we're about ready to uh, define for today's episode. That's just to check whether or not if we're holding down a specific key, and then when we're not, it will let go. And while the variable is enabled, we can't move, we can't jump whatsoever until we let go. Uh, next up, we need to go into our Firebuster script here, and we need to add the case for ducking. Very simple. Um, so under this, we'll just say case duck. And hold on a second, did I forget? Yes, I did. Don't forget to break your statements and end the case there. We'll open it up and close the set of color braces and hit break. Uh, and then do a couple lines down. Okay, so if vertical aim is set to one for a diagonal null, null up shot, uh, we're gonna set proj to be equal to instance create x plus open parentheses c times 25 remember c being our image x scale y plus 17 and a remember being our specific argument for our projectile else we'll do the same thing we'll just adjust our coordinates uh, our x coordinate will be c times 27 and our y coordinate is y plus 24 and of course the same a for our argument of our projectile and then we just need to quickly say if if c is equal to one proj direction is equal to zero else proj dot direction is equal to 180 and that should do it there because of that now back to our player here um we need to go into the master controller of our player and then go into our create event and we need to add some duck variables down here I've already done that here. You just need three variables. One for the ducking variable that I've mentioned before. Uh, tap is going to be used for going through our platforms. And a tap timer as kind of like a reset before the tap variable starts to decrement. Because we'll need to tap the down key two times before we can fall straight through the platform. As I mentioned before and of course if you want to know how to make the platform please check out Sean Spalding's videos on the platforms and the moving platforms and then of course make that adjustment I mentioned earlier where instead of saying player dot key down you say player dot tap is equal to two all right now next up back into our step event we are going to go ahead and start by going into our platformer here and we need to adjust a few things again so, um, here, I'm going to make a comment saying uh, selective HSP values. This will come in handy later when we do our dashy mechanics, but we'll get to that later. So, under define in player inputs here, we're going to keep this key down here, but we're, below it, we're going to add a key down tab, and this is going to be equal to keyboard check pressed forward s so when we tap the key this will become one for just a second and it will return back to zero and that's what we need down here where i've had the selective hsp values um if we're, we're going to make it so can, the variable can move needs to be enabled so we can move we can adjust our h our horizontal speed so we're just going to say if can move and just leave it at that our HSP will be set to move times move speed, and when that's false, we can't do anything about it. We can't move. And the similar thing under our jump here, uh, we're going to come above this condition here and say if can move, open up a set of curly braces, indent this inwards, and then close the curly braces down here. Uh, down below, below all this coding, doesn't matter really where you put it. Um, yeah, we're gonna make a comment called the tap controller and this will control our tapping so if we press key down tap and we're place meeting with x y plus one ctrl platform which i will i will make a note really quick that plat this object here is parented 
or it's a child of the control f of, of the CTRL floor object, and then the moving platform and the st the static platforms are childs of this. So you need to parent your child your you need to parent your platform objects to this platform controller, and you need to parent the platform controller to the floor controller here. Now, the reason I do that is just so we can control how we can go through uh, platforms, whilst at the same time having vertical collisions with them while we're standing above them, for example. So, back to the statement. Um, in, in, when we met these conditions, all we're going to do is say tap plus plus and tap timer will be set to 30 which is if we're running at 60 frames per second it's half a second all right and then really quick we'll go into the timers here and we'll add the conditions for our tap timer uh, right here so if tap timer is greater than zero uh, we are going to ha we're just going to basically say whoop, come on we're just going to say tap timer minus minus but we're going to say if tap is equal to zero we'll set our tap timer as well equal to zero because what this will do what this tap timer is going to do is when it hits zero it's going to subtract one from the, the the tap variable and if if we're just say for example we're sitting on a platform and we just want to duck down we don't want to we don't want to hold the down key and fall straight through we want to be able to tap the down key twice just to go under I think Super Smash Brothers uh, Brawl on the Wii d has this mechanic, so that's basically what we're replicating here. So else, we're also going to say if tap is greater than zero, tap minus minus, as I've talked about, and our tap timer will be reset to our root, our, our 30 seconds or half a second basically you could alternatively say room speed times 0 0.5 but since i know the frame the game's running at 60 fps i'm just going to say 30. if you set it to 60 there'll be a, a full second else uh tap timer will be equal to zero and then tap is just equal to zero and that's all done and dusted there we've got four more to go no, don't worry we're now going to step into our animation handling controllers here, and this is going to apply where we're idling the player. Like I said, we, we cannot be moving for this to happen. So, but before I do anything here, up here, I'm going to make something new called Modify Mask Indexes. Because if in the future we add enemies that can shoot at us, and if we're ducking, if we keep the same I image index, we're still going to get hit. So we need to modify the mask, the mask index, or our collision, or our bounding box. So while we're holding down the, while we're crouching, we need to adjust the index so the projectile can go over our head and not hit us by accident. That being said, so if we're ducking, so if that's set to true, uh, we're going to set our mask index to be our MS or our your masking uh, mask index sprite, which I'll show this in one in a minute. Else, uh, mask index is equal to MSKX. So this is the uh, crouching sprite right here. Um, and if you take, if you can compare that to the, um, let's see, if you compare that to our. Uh, regular you can see that it's it's shorter so it's best for crouching and dashing purposes but we so when we start the dash we could fit under that small gap for example now in the idling the player when the move is equal to zero duck controllers so if we press key down which we've already defined ahead of time in our here I'm gonna move this window around here so since like this code executes before this code here, the variable key down is already defined, so we don't need to worry about uh, predefining it anywhere. So if we're, if we're pressing key down, we're going to say duck is equal to true and can move is equal to false. So that will restrict us from moving. Else we'll just say duck is equal to false and can move is equal to true. That's that statement done. Now then, if we are not ducking, we're going to basically say if we're not checking the index of ducking here, we'll animate the player of idling. Uh, 
then we'll do an else if statement of if we're not ducking again. It's it seems weird, but it, it I'll I'll explain here in just a minute. In this condition, we'll set the image index to zero, and we'll animate the player to duck. Otherwise, we'll just say we need to animate the player of ducking again. So, it seems confusing, but here's what's happening. If we're not ducking, so the duck variable is false, we're going to go from... or Basically, what's going to happen is... It's, I'll start right here. So, say we, we the, the duck variable is enabled. If we're not... If the sprite index does not equal our duck sprite, what's going to happen is because the image index is zero and start the animation of our duck. Otherwise, when we when it, if we are checking if if now we're checking the index of duck, so when the sprite index is equal to any duck sprite, um, it will keep animating it. And what it does here in the anime player script, as I've typed out. If since duck is true, it's going to hold the image index still so the animation doesn't loop. But when we let go of that button, the animation is going to continue. And then it's kind of, it jumps up to here where we're not ducking. And then I'll, we'll introduce a script in the, we'll introduce, we'll modify our script in the animation end to make it where it'll go from the ducky animation to the idle animation. No problem. So that being said, one more thing I need to do is come down here uh, res and make an, make an animation update for uh, reset shoot if duck to stand. This is just an animation glitch that's, that happens if we're shooting and we're, we're having the duck index. If we let go of the duck of the, of the down key, it just it stays there in the in ducking index and doesn't switch to the proper sprite index. So that's what this line of code is going to do. So if we say key shoot, which depending if rapid fire is on or not and check index duck and we're not ducking all we're going to do is just animate the player to idle and set our image index back to zero assignment operated expected that's because i didn't have, I have an equal sign which is fine okay now one more thing we do need to do in the same thing here is in our air-based animations where we have this question of did we run off a ledge or are we leaping off a wall and aiming? But what if we jumped off a platform? Because what would happen... So what would happen if I don't put this in is basically when we tap the down key two times and fall through the duck animation will still be playing and it's not going to animate properly so all we need to do here is just change this condition to allow an or case of check index duck and then in this condition we'll set duck to false can move back to true and that's it so we can close out of this close out of that and this just well, head, well, let's head to the animation end now, that, since I've been talking about this. Um, so, in here, we need to make a new comment for crouching, standing up. So, if check index duck, so if, if our sprite index is equal to any of our duckings, if our shoot timer... It's going to be like an array, kind of like an animate player here, but here's, here's what's going to happen. So if our shoot timer is greater than zero, we're going to set our image index to 11. Else, if we are aiming somewhere, we're going to set our image index to 11 again. Otherwise, we'll set our image index equal to 5, and then we will end... Oh, wait. And if we're not ducking, if we're not ducking, we'll animate the player to the idle stage. And that should do it there. Uh, two more things to go. We need to update a case for our aiming system. Um, all we need to do is just add an OR case because all the angles are the same here for, let's see, just for diagonal up bias shots. We don't need to set a specific angle for our ducking. We can just say OR, check index, uh, duck, and our angle will be set to 35. Similarly, down here, when we're facing to the left, we can say OR, check index, 
duck and then the angle will be set to 180 minus 35 which should be 145 degrees and that's it there and of course if we want to shoot we need to add our uh, firebuster case for ducking so really quick if check and in check index duck will fire the buster with the uh, first argument being B, our local variable of our projectile, and then the case of duck. And then what we can do is you can just take this, copy it, and then paste it here, and then paste it here. Making sure I added it. Okay, cool. So now we should be able to run the game and see what happens. So, not set before reading it. Oh. That was supposed to... That was supposed to have been fine. So, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> well, here, let's just, let's just do this. Just a... Debug. Key shoot. Set that to zero. Okay, so we can still shoot just fine. And if I hold down the down key, we don't seem to be crouching. Why is that? <laughs> Crap, what did I miss? Let's, let's also check the tapping really quick just to make sure we can tap to the platformers. Or the platforms. So if I tap once, nothing. If I tap once, still nothing. But if I double tap, boom, we can go under the platform now. And then same thing for the moving platform, if I double tap, we can jump straight down just like that. Okay. So, duck is false, tap is zero, tap timer is zero as well. Alright, one potential candidate is that I missed something down here when move is equal to one. So, we're in this little part here, I'm just going to say, and not ducking. And in this condition, I am going to say, well, actually I don't need to say anything in here. And I need to also update this condition and also and at the and not ducking. And below that, I also need to say if check index duck image index equal to six. All right, let's see how let's see if that fixes anything. I probably should have done it. Nope. Okay, that is on that's honestly just weird why it's not working and <sighs> Alright, give me a second. Okay, found another culprit. In my other build of this same project I had all this code in here. So let's get rid of this comment. So basically yeah, okay. It was it was in here. Run to shoot. So what needs to happen is the duck controller and all the other stuff here needs to go from here. Cut that out and then get rid of these lines and it needs to go into or just under here. And maybe it'll work. <laughs> and then one more thing I also forgot to add is and not duck here. And now it should work. Oh, this so okay. It's close. It's very close. So, it's do it's assigning to the right index now, but we need this to 
get down to here in this position, but it's it's stuck here. <laughs> uh, do that clip. There we go. All right, so I reorganized all the coding um, really quick, as you can see. Here, I just copied and pasted it from my project. It's just basically the same thing, just ordered in a specific way. Um, go ahead and pause the video right here and get this batch of code down really quick. And as we can see here, um, we can hit or we can hit the crouch key and we can shoot. I can hit tap A or D and I'm not moving either way. And if I toggle the auto fire key and, and then start shooting and let go, you can see that I can alternate there. And of course, I can also aim and, and shoot this way. I can also aim diagonal up. And then um, we can also explore into the other room here um, and climb up to this platform. And you can see that when I hold crouch, normally with the, the Sean Spalding's platform, you would fall straight through this already. So you need to double tap it in order to go down like so. And of course, we can now shoot through this gap, no problem. The same thing goes for the um, moving platform here. I can get on it, I can sit on it just like this, no problem. And if I can double tap, boom, boom. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this episode. In the next uh, episode, we are going to take care of the dashing mechanics. Another pain in my butt, but we'll see what happens. I've been Kaden or Nighthawk, and I will see you guys later.